Good morning, everybody. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. In Provincetown. This week featuring. Wake up, wake up. Can I have some coffee? Wake up, wake up. Make it strong, please. Hey! Ho! Hey! Wake up, wake up! Oh. <laughs> Whee! No, really, can I have some coffee? Wake up, wake up! Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, October 7th. This is Wake Up in Promise Town. My name is Bob. I'm Harrison. Thank you guys for waking up with us. Yeah. Uh, we have an amazing show for you We today. really do. So it is the Washington Shore Festival this weekend, and we just packed our show with some of our favorite performers from Washington Shore. We have Christine, Man on Man, Holly Miranda, and Kalechi coming in to chat with us later. Chock-a-block. You know. guys, this is the second annual Washington Shore Festival. If you're mm -hmm. not already in town, you have time to get here, depending on where you're depending on where you're watching mm -hmm. this from. But um, you can still get an all-weekend pass for these amazing shows that are happening at the Crown and Anchor, the Red Room, and here at yep. the Province Sound Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. Is this, look at this. What We're is, on the set. We're yeah. on set. This is just like last year when yeah. we were over there on yeah. that set. Um, that was a fun show. That was a really fun yeah. show. Um, what else is happening this weekend? Um, this weekend is also Arts Province Town, and both this weekend leads right into Women's Week and also Fox Fest. So this next week is going to be wild in Province Town. Yeah, happy Indigenous Peoples Day weekend, mm -hmm. everybody. Um, how was your week? It was good. What did you do? Um, well, this past week was the last week of ha long happy hours at the Red Inn. So mm -hmm. it was my kind of, hopefully my last, like, I, it's, this is the, honestly, the, everyone is like, oh, Labor Day weekend, it slows down a lot for you right after. And I'm like, no, but like, once happy hours slow down at the Red Inn, that's when things oh, totally. actually start to slow down for us. Yeah, there's like basically two or three weeks of work left. October 30th is right around the corner. I can't wait. Yeah. I just need my six months off, you know? Wait, your birthday is before that, though. Yeah. When is your birthday? The 21st of October. I already bought your birthday present. That scares me. Why? Does it scare you as much as Christine scares me? No. She, po <laughs> she was like, you scare me? And I was like, excuse me? Um, You're pretty scary. What are you talking about? Yeah. Look at this. What's this color? Salmon. Sam Look at this salmon polo. This is not scary. This is the most unscary thing. Mm. Uh, what'd you do this week? Um, so the big highlight of my last week of last weekend was I got to see Bros on opening night. What did you think? I liked it. Yeah, I think the general consensus was that it was very good. I think most people who who saw it thought it was great. Mm -hmm. um, it was really it was kind of a magical experience to see it um, at the cinema here in town with so many friends. It was a packed theater, and I kind of knew everyone in the room, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. We went Sunday night, and it was still packed. Mm -hmm. And the person working came in and was like, can I take a picture of this? Because we never sell out like a Sunday night movie. Oh, that's cool. like, of that's course great. you did though, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think it's still at like 98% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. 89. It went down to 89? It went down to 89. It still indicates universal acclaim. Fresh. Something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes is great. It has a 90% viewer score, which is also great. I think, in general, people like it. Going When the movie was released to critics, um, there was a lot of negative reviews on, like, IMDb and stuff, but they all got removed because they were, like, trolls, like, homophobic trolls, like, trying to drag it down. Good Lord. Yeah. What was your favorite part? I mean, Provincetown was featured in it, which, are, which I thought was really special, especially watching it in Provincetown with a bunch of people who are the people who make Provincetown so special and make it the reason why movies want to come and film here right. and be, watching it with those people was really incredible. Yeah, and also, I mean, so much of it, for me anyway, felt like recognizably real gay life. Mm. I'm like, I know that New Yorker who yeah. dates people that are hotter than him and complains about it the whole time. Like, I'm friends with that person. I have like 10 of those. Name them. No, no <laughs> Billy Eichner. <laughs> right. Uh, no, but I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, um, it was a really friend. good... <laughs> so congratulations billy um on a wonderful job we love the movie yeah. um it didn't do as well as hoped when it came to um box office but i do think it's one of those movies because i mean I, it's hard because i don't know if i like live in this weird bubble mm -hmm. and that's you do it will i definitely but like every i know ev everyone i know kind of made an effort to see it mm -hmm. um 
and everyone made an effort to tell people to go see it. Well, that's the thing too. Like it did very well in major metropolitan areas, gay markets. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, also this is my thing. You opened it on the first weekend of October against a scary movie, which like killed at the box. Office. And I, I didn't mean that or, you know, pun not intended, whatever, but like that scary movie did really, really yeah. well and will do well all month. I'm like, why didn't you save the gay rom-com for February and bill it as like a Valentine's day movie? Mm. You know, universal pictures is to blame. Wow. Drag them. I know. Um, People are kind of looking backwards and trying to figure out why it didn't do as well as they had hoped or expected. And a lot of, and I kind of see this argument. A lot of people are like, why they, they spent so much time hammering home the like landmarkness of it all. Right. The fact that it was the first, the first gay rom-com um, with a theatrical <laughs> release from a major motion picture studio. The fact that it was an entirely queer cast, um, and a lot of people are like, it might have done better if they just were like, it's a really funny movie. Go watch it. Right. Which it yeah. was. It was, totally. Um, was, was there anything in it that you felt was, wasn't, rep, like, felt out of place as a queer person? No. And my only problems with it, the only things that I didn't like are things that I don't like about all romantic comedies. Like, there's, that genre has, like, built in, like, ugh. Now he has to give this speech, like that right. kind of stuff. It's always like they fall in love, then something happens, which makes it seem like they won't, and then they break up. Right. And then they like, which of course, but that's every romantic comedy. Exactly. And the people that are like, I didn't think it represented me. And I'm like, do you think every woman that went to go see the wedding planner <laughs> lose a how to lose a wedding planner in 10 days? Like, do you think they all think they're Kate Hudson? Right. I don't think so. No. Um, I like I enjoyed it a lot though. Mm -hmm. I laughed a lot. I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. Like when they were like, "That guy looks like Dumbledore on steroids." Quality. I, I know that guy. We know that guy too. <laughs> like every single gay archetype in the movie. I was like, "Yep, know her too." Yeah. Uh, one thing that I walked away being like, "That wasn't right." What? Um, what? There was like an orgy scene where four of them were all oh. hooking up, and they were all wearing boxer briefs. <laughs> You've never been to an orgy where everyone's wearing boxer briefs? No. Yeah, usually there's like one thong. Yeah. One like regular and brief. Especially because they they took so much care to to make it kind of true to form and to represent people. I like the archetypes of men that were in that orgy were well, cuz there was like <laughs> there was like the like jockey hot guy. Right. We know what kind of underwear the jockey hot guy wears. Mm -hmm. Like, and then there was the kind of like the annoying twink. We know what kind of underwear an annoying twink wears. Like, you could have used that to um, play up their character a little. Bit. The annoying twink is the one that never has on boxer briefs. Yeah, I feel like he would have been wearing like hot pink Andrew Christian briefs with like the butthole. You know what I mean? Where the, it's not a jock strap; it's a brief, but it's like made to look like a jock strap. Uh, with like the a brief butthole. with just like a circle cut out of the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what that guy would wear. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was great because it was, um, it like like you said, it stuck to all the major points that um, all rom coms kind of hit. But it also because they built into the plot ways to kind of touch on a lot of queer history mm -hmm. um, because the main character is opening a queer history museum, so right. they got to put a lot of that in. I didn't know that Abe Lincoln was gay. Was that real? I think that um, there's or, it's presumed that he might have been bisexual. But there's no way to prove it, which is the point that the movie makes. They're like, you can't prove that, so we can't put it in the museum. Right. But I, those scenes of them at the board table where it's like every type of queer person mm -hmm. like f fighting for space, that was funny to me. Mm -hmm. Felt very um, accurate. Yeah. Um, what else did you do last weekend? Um, I worked a bit, but I did make it to one of the um, Leathermates event. I came here to the brewery on Sunday for Hops and Bottoms, which is very fun, cute party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, James Cerny was DJing. It was awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Speaking of James Cerny, what? he's DJing tomorrow night at um, the Crown and Anchor for a Mushroom Head party, which Ooh. is an arts province on in Washashore event. But first up is the Net Gala. Yes. What are, what are you wearing to the Net Gala? Nets. Nets? Yeah. What kind of nets? Fishnets. Fishnets. Yeah. Did Not you know fishnets like... were invented in Provincetown? Like fishnet in fashion? What? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Really? Yes. How do you know that? It was a trivia, a trivia question that, and I read a whole Wikipedia page about it. It must, it must be, be true. true. Um, my recollection, it was a woman in Truro who, like, her father worked on the docks, and she was, like, she started taking fishnets and making oh. them into fashion, and that specific company blew up, and now oh, cool. it's fishnet in fashion. 
That was your category last week? No. It was no. A year or two ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I did a Provincetown category, and that was part of it. Mm -hmm. Like, Provincetown history. How was trivia this week? Trivia was fun. Benji co-hosted with me. What was his round? Uh, what was his round? Brothers. In honor of bros. Oh. It was bros. Yeah. Excellent. And I was witches in honor of, honor of Hocus Pocus 2. Did you watch that? I did not. Why not? I just didn't have time. You love the first one, don't you? Yeah. But, like, I I haven't watched it since I was a child, and I... Uh, didn't age well? I did. It's just not a good movie. Well, right. But as an 11-year-old queer child watching... Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy and Jimmy. I, I was like, I'm into this. Really? I was yeah. 13 and I was like, they're overacting. Why is she chewing the scenery? And then they made another one where they essentially do the same thing, right? Yeah. 30 years later. No, they, I'm happy for everybody that was excited for it. But half of them, half of the people that were like living for it to happen, like complained about it the second it came out. What were their complaints? That it was dumb. That it was dumb. that it like didn't live up to you know. It's like I don't know what you expected it to be. Right. It's Hocus Pocus two. Mm. It's not Gandhi two, or <laughs> you know, it's, it was never going to be some amazing movie. Yeah, like you know what it was. It's campy. It's nonsense. Gandhi two still dead. <laughs> Coming. Where's Where's Sir Ben Kingston or Kingsley? <laughs> you get Ben Kingsley on the phone. Jesus. Ben Kingsley, if you're watching this right now, I apologize. Mm. Um. Well, last weekend was a very bit. I mean, it was a very heavy, busy weekend for me. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, Sean Nine. Maybe you didn't know Sean Nightingale, who was the former owner of the Pilgrim House two owners ago, before those lesbians turned it into like a conference center. Sean Nightingale um, owned it and um, brought a lot of really amazing acts to town. Mm -hmm. Like he was a great producer of shows. He was. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure someone's going to try to correct me. Um, he was the first producer who started doing big shows at Town Hall. Oh, cute. So like he put Joan Rivers at Town Hall. John Waters and Bruce Valanche both spoke at the service on Sunday. Um, but like while I was getting ready for this funeral, a really good friend of mine passed away. And I'm like, like we just can't catch a break here in Provincetown mm. this year. So it's been a, tough um, summer. It's been a really tough summer. Um, David Tobin uh, has had lived in Provincetown for 30 plus years. He'd worked everywhere from the Muse to, I think when I met David, he was working at Front Street for you know, 15, 20 mm. years. When he finally decided to stop waiting tables, he went to work for Brian Raffinelli and helped throw events all over the world. And then finally, in the last two years, he got to the point where he's like, I'm done working for other people. I bought a and b in Vieques, Puerto Rico, and I'm going to move there and live on the beach and run this guest house. And so like two winters ago, like in the middle of the pandemic, he was like, you guys need to come visit me. Just come down to Vieques, screw everything else. And we were like, next winter, we're definitely going to come and see you. You always think you're going to have another winter to go visit your friends. Um, but he had been fighting cancer since December when he moved back to Truro. And um, to all of David's family and friends, um, my condolences, sending you guys lots of love and thinking about you. Um, so that was Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, worked Monday and Tuesday. Last night, I had a really fun night last night. So Tony, who owns Terra Luna, do you ever go to, you go to Terra Luna. I've been once, yeah. Yeah, you had that garlicky pasta. It was so good. And you sat outside. It was like, I, it was, there was so much garlic, it was like full of regret, but also delicious. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of pasta. Yeah. Full of regret and delicious. But uh, he, Terra Luna was closed every Monday this summer. And I don't know why, but he decided to come to Happy Hour at the Red Inn every Monday all summer. Mm -hmm. So like I saw him once a week all summer. And he was like, you make the best dirty martinis on the planet. You're the best bartender on the entire Cape. And I was like, I know. Please. Thanks, Tony. But he was like, you have to come out to Terra Luna before we close, and this is the last week of it. So you guys have like three more nights to go to Terra Luna intro if you have time. Um, go out and have uh, some duck and some pan-fried goat cheese. And some garlic. And some garlicky pasta. But um, we go out there, have a great time, and then when I got back to town, Mary, my friend Mary Callanan, who, when I was a waiter at the Crown and Anchor in 2005, she was like the piano bar singer. Oh, no way. And now she's like a Broadway star, and she just finished touring with My Fair Lady. She was in town last night, and she texted me, and she was like, um, Mike Flanagan asked me to um, sing with him tonight, and I said yes, and then he said it's hip-hop night, and I was like, why didn't you tell me that before I said yes? So will you guys please come to this? Because I don't know how it's going to go. What did she say? Well, we got there at, right after she finished singing. And I was like, oh. well, like we came back over from Terra Luna. And she was like, I just finished. It was great. He's a musical genius. Like, you know, he can just like make stuff up as mm -hmm. he goes, you know, like any great jazz musician does. But then I was like, back when I worked at the Crown and Anchor, 
you know, we'd be crazy busy and I'd be running around. And whenever she would start singing Moon River, I would stop waiting tables, like lean in the doorway and just be like, oh, I love Mary so much. And so last night she was like, Mike's done, but ask him if he'll play Moon River and I'll go up and sing it. And so I was like, Mike, will you, do you have time for one more song? He's like, I don't really know Moon River, but John McFadden's there. John McFadden, who we had on the show last mm -hmm. week, two weeks, who, ago. two weeks ago, who had a show last night with Leroy Bream. So like, they're all singing together. And John's like, sure, I'll play piano. So he goes up and plays piano. Mike's like, then I'll play the saxophone. And he just makes up a sax solo for Moon River and Mary sings it. And I was like, oh, it was like the sweetest, most beautiful thing. Yeah. I loved it. So serendipitous. It was very serendipitous. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you to all three of you for doing that last night. It was really, it just, it was really special. Mm -hmm. Cause you, and I'm, the people that I'm sitting with, I'm like, these people don't know each other. They have never played anything together right. and they're just doing this. Like, I wish I was that good at anything uh, to be able to just do that. Same. Right? Anything. You can sing. Sure. You can just not, go up and sing a song like no. that. No. <laughs> just, I guess that's yeah. true. Poof. Yeah. Make drinks we do? Yeah. We're good at bartending. Make no, isn't that the most irritating thing? When somebody's like, no, what's your specialty? I'm like, Bud Light. I'll open a beer. Like, you know, yeah. what do you say when people say, what's when your specialty? When people go, what's your favorite drink to make? I'm like, my favorite drink to make is a drink that you're going to love. Tell me what it is. <laughs> That's a good one. Is it? Start, yeah. I think it's kind of bitchy. Really? Yeah. No, but you're telling them, I want to do what you're going to love. I think that's a friendly, informative, helpful thing. Not when it's coming from me. Well, watch your tone, <laughs> maybe. Just the tone. Right. Um, are you going to get to go to the Washington Shore Festival tonight? Yeah, I'm um, hosting the uh, red carpet interviews at the Net Gala tonight. Mm -hmm. My look is in the mail. Hope it arrives before then. It's a photo finish Amazon order, you know? It's Provincetown. There's nets everywhere. <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> oh, you could just get some fish nets. Yeah, but the, the Net Gala is tonight at 7 o'clock. It's like the opening reception mm -hmm. for the Washington uh, festival. I'm mm -hmm. um, actually it kind of kicked off last night with a small intimate dinner with um, the people involved and some of the artists that had arrived early last night at the Crown. It was very delicious. You were at that? Yeah. Um, and KT came to DJ at the end while we hung out. It was super cute. Nice. Yeah. But I do work the next two days, so I won't be able to catch anything on Saturday or Sunday, unfortunately. Right. I'm off on Sunday, so I'm going to go to everything on Sunday. I work. I know. And Sunday is also Peter's birthday. Oh, cute. Happy birthday, So dude. many Libras. I know. There's a birthday in the room right mm -hmm. now. Right. Happy birthday, Joey. When he comes up, we'll wish him up. Yeah. No, I always say in Provincetown that like most people are Libras, and it it's like constantly reaffirmed that it's true. It's a lot of y'all. Yeah. And Gemini's too. Yeah. Uh, what what's what was that sound? Every, everyone hates Gemini's. No. Uh, what Ethan too? At two Brute? See, I hate Pisces. I don't hate anybody. <laughs> Pisces. Yeah. You're talking about someone very specific. I will this off right now. Are you? Oh, you're, oh, a, you're Pisces? a Pisces. You're allowed to ick a Gemini, but he can't ick a Pisces. <laughs> this fucking place. I'm talking about many Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> um. I. Yeah. Only. Only men who are Pisces. I don't care for. Except you, Andrew. <laughs> Women who are Pisces, I love. Um, <laughs> he's been burned a couple of times. I think. A couple. Multiple times. Um, let's talk about stuff going on. Oh, I forgot to mention also this weekend, um, starting tomorrow, is the Monumental Yard Sale weekend. Mm -hmm. um, they do it twice a year. Once, I think they do it on Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend and Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. Um, there's always tons of fun stuff. People have so much money. They're selling such nice things for nothing. Yes. So, Like there's two a year, I think. The one in the spring, it's like people are oh, I need to get a couch for my apartment for the summer. Now it's people being like, we don't want these parcels anymore. So you can get mm. a lot of really great stuff that people are just trying to get rid of. Um, it's, I think tomorrow in at in Jen's front yard at 160 Commercial Street, there's going to be like 10 tables of different okay. vendors. There's a Raquel table. So Raquel loved to knit and she started a lot of projects that she didn't finish. Her mom finished knitting them. No way. And they're going to be selling them tomorrow at 160 Commercial Street. All of the proceeds will go to the Raquel Schwallow Foundation. Go to 160, buy some um, cute little knitted things. I just love that her mom finished them. Totally. Like, that's so cute. And especially to be able to own one of those pieces is right. really sweet. And mm -hmm. I think it starts at nine tomorrow, sure. like mm -hmm. nine to three or something. It's most of the afternoon mm -hmm. or morning, whatever. Uh, yeah, what are you looking for? Nothing. Nothing? I, 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 I have too much stuff. Really? Yeah. I wish I got my shit together and like got Sold. all my clothes that 
are like nice, but not nice enough to like really sell. Mm. They can go to the church. It's fine. Well, Tommy, our favorite hoarder, was like, I'm going to have the best yard sale of all time. I'm like, I can't wait to see what he puts He's out. He's just going to like unlock the doors of his house and be like, take <laughs> some stuff. Like 12 fishing rods. Yeah. He's got a lot of things. Yeah. He has the space for it, though, so. Winthrop Street. No, Court Street. Winthrop Street. Is it going to be at his house? I think so. Yeah. Like, you can just open your doors and just walk around town. Like, there's a mm -hmm. lot of people. Just going to make a door open, go in it. <laughs> take stuff. Offer a dollar. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Um, there was a meeting earlier this week to that kind of began uh, the housing discussion in terms of mm -hmm. next spring's town meeting. There, mm -hmm. um, it's a council that's going to uh, put forward some articles into the town meeting for new regulations around housing. Um, specifically, there, there's a lot, there's uh, statewide guidance for affordable housing, things like that. But one thing that there isn't a state guideline for is seasonal housing. So there's they're putting a lot of thought into how they can support seasonal housing because even the housing funds that we have here in town all go towards affordable housing and not necessarily seasonal housing. Right. Yeah. yeah, and we do need, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, like I've said a thousand times, every apartment I ever rented as a seasonal rental is now no longer one. Mm -hmm. These are like, because you know, they're what? Um, second homes. Oh. Well, like somebody, like these houses that used to be like, you know, they're, the owner split it up and sold it as three different things. Mm -hmm. And now that person lives in it for the summer or Airbnbs and right. Airbnbs it or whatever, you know, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, so there really isn't that much seasonal housing at all. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how you bring it back. Like, what are they proposing? Um, building. But, Just, okay. But it's like they have to figure out a way to, like, officially allocate money towards seasonal housing because all money is alloc allocated towards affordable housing, right. which is great because we do need both. But Have they broken ground at the barracks? I don't think so. I'm not sure, though. Because that's the whole purpose of that is seasonal. I yeah, think. I did. I read the article about it that they um, it was in the Independent. I think Paul Benson wrote it. It was a really great article. And one thing that I, that stuck out to me, mm -hmm. and I feel like happens a lot in this town, and I feel like I complain about it a lot, and everyone rolls their eyes when I complain about it. But there was a select board member who was talking about the ways in which a lot of the um, seasonal workers live in town, and he was like. He's like, some of these kids are living 14 to 15 um, kids per house. And I just wish we would stop calling adults kids because it like infantilizes them. And it like, it makes it easier for people to be like, they're kids. They live 14 to a house because they're kids. You know what I mean? And I, I just wish we would speak about people in a respectful way that um, fully recognizes their humanity. <laughs> I'm laughing at him. I'm not laughing at. Liz. No, I feel like when when people call people like I'm constantly people are like, oh well, young people, well young people, and just being 35, I feel like it's weird to be called a young person. And I know it is. Um, it's about perspective, but I feel like when you're called young people or kids or thing, it's a way of not having to take that person as seriously as you should. Ethan, you're probably the youngest person that I see on a regular basis. Does it bother you if someone calls you a kid? Um, some, sometimes. Like in context? Yeah, like, mm. yeah, context is kind of like Yeah. Like, I, like, I don't know how to describe it. I don't want to take too long, well, but like, if you're saying it in a way that is like diminishing, and right. I can tell, right. then like, I am going to have a problem because like, I am an adult. Mm -hmm. I, I take care of myself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And these are people who are working and taking yeah. care of themselves. And also in reference to housing, when you're speaking in reference to housing or you're at a town meeting or you're on a board, like to speak about it in that way is weird. Right. I got you. Yeah. But if you say like something like, I don't want you to have to like take too much responsibility for something because like, you're a kid. Then I'm Okay. Right. Oh, if right. it's letting you off the hook for something you don't right. mind. <laughs> yeah. Good to know, I Ethan. love that. Um, what's going on in the world, Harry? Um, Is it still a shit show? Of course. I don't I don't have too many, like, super serious topics today. <gasps> Who watches Scooby-Doo? Trevor raised his hand. I, I, there's some applause in the corner. So there was some... Um, a few days ago, they released <laughs> Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo, which is a new digital streaming um, Scooby-Doo film. And it um, appeased a lot of people that have been saying a certain thing on the internet for quite some time, which is like, Belma should be a lesbian. 
And there is a scene in which, um, what is her name? Uh, Coco, a new character gets introduced and Velma is entirely smitten with her. So the creators of Scooby, or not the creators, but the people who are in charge and own the intellectual property of Scooby-Doo <laughs> at this point um, are finally making it canon that Velma is a lesbian or queer. I mean, haven't they all been pretty asexual up to this point? I mean, I, aren't oh, Daphne, Daphne and Fred the fucking? Chicago. They're fucking, yeah, right? They're not a couple. Yeah, they are. They are? Yeah. I never got that impression. Aren't they in the movie, like Freddie Prinze and Sarah Michelle? Well, yeah, when real humans were playing them, then they are sexualized. But as a cartoon from the 70s and 80s, I don't think there was any indication that anyone was one way or another. Mm. So it's like now in a cartoon, you have to make one of them a lesbian. That's just sort of silly to me. So, well, you know what my, will the kids think? You know my rule. If they don't expressively tell me any character is straight, I assume they're all queer. That works on Commercial Street. Yeah. Like, the presumption of gayness is something that we have here. Mm -hmm. Like, anybody that you encounter, you just figure that they're gay, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. But um, Velma, when she first, rec uh, first notices her, she says she has incredible glasses, amazing turtleneck, and a brilliant brain. <laughs> All the things I'm looking for in a partner. Maybe <laughs> Incredible not the glasses. The turtleneck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you watch Scooby Doo? No, no. But I mean, I, ha I have. Yeah. Um, I also want to give a special congratulations to our friend Jeremy Hobson. Um, this past week, he released kind of like a teaser for his new like podcast radio show called The Middle. Mm -hmm. um, our very own Andrew uh, did the theme song for it. Are you going to play it? No. Oh. oh. I'll, I'll say. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> But so tune in on October 19th and you can hear it on, yeah. the, on the radio. So October 19th is going to be the first one. It's going to feature four live broadcasts. They're all going to be on um, streaming on radio. And it's like a call-in feature. Mm -hmm. And it's called The Middle because it's going to be about it basically like zooming in a little on the middle of the country, voices that are often ignored in politics. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be a call-in show to talk about the issues affecting them, things like that, politics. Um, yeah. What is colloquially known as flyover country. Wow. Right? Well, I don't call yeah. it that, but <laughs> you say, we're not supposed to call it that anymore? That's the whole point. Oh, right. It's called The Middle now? Yeah, it's basically like uplifting the voices and opinions of people in the middle whose voices are often overlooked when it comes to politics. Nebraska has two senators, just like you. <laughs> Thank you for terrifying. that. Terrifying. Um, <laughs> it's going to be four live special broadcasts. Three of the, It's going to be on Wednesday nights. Three of them are going to happen before this uh, upcoming midterm elections. And then there'll be one after, which will kind of like, like, figure, like they're going to look at what happened, who won, why, things like that, different issues that affected it. So it's going to be awesome. I mean, this was something Billy Eichner said after the opening weekend of Bros. He was like, nobody in the middle of the country went to see this movie. He's like, it did really well in California and New York. And like this whole part of the country, nobody saw the movie. Yeah. It's dangerous. Right. It's too gay. Like to go out as a queer person. Right. Mm -hmm. To go see a gay movie. Right. Like, For going to see a gay movie, you could get fired? The assumption that you're gay. Oh, my yeah. God. I just think that there's such a detect chart. No, one no I got you. So many queer people, especially the ones with the loudest voices because of this design, live in metropolitan areas. They live in places like Provincetown, and it's so easy to feel like, oh, we did it. We're at the finish line. But what you don't realize is you can drive 20 minutes away from where you are and it's a completely different experience for queer people. And that's still in the United States, which when you look at global, globally and politically, it is much better here than so many other places in the world. Absolutely. But I mean, even in New Bedford, Massachusetts, my friend Joe was called a faggot in his own front yard. Oh, yeah. Like somebody driving by in a truck was like, faggot. I'm like, what were you voguing? Like, what were you doing in the front yard? Like, his just like, yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you know, that's not that far from here. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was I, like, <laughs> I would have caught him that too. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in Connecticut, which is like largely viewed as like a very liberal state. It's a blue state, obviously. Uh -huh. But like, what people don't realize is that like all that blueness exists in Fairfield County and then almost everywhere else in that state, like 90% of the land area of that state is majority Republican. Like, if you pulled into my high school parking lot, there were many big pickup trucks with the Confederate, Confederate flag flying and off the back. Still? And most of the people driving those trucks hadn't been south of New Jersey in their entire lives. Right. Yeah. Get out more, everyone. Come see us in Provincetown. Yeah, I mean, that is the dream. I There are many moments where I have to pinch myself. 
I constantly refer to us as the gay 1% living here in Provincetown. We are very lucky to be here. Yeah. Um, like I said, also this weekend is, um, after this weekend, which is Washer Shore and Arts Province Town, it goes right into Women's Week and also Fox Fest. Fox Fest is a new event happening. Um, the majority of the program is at the Crown and Anchor. There's going to be a variety show. Dichotomy with Kristen Becker is happening Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday at the Crown. There's going to be, um, women performing in the dive bar all week. I know Brittany Ralphs is going to be there. Moselle with Mike Flanagan is mm -hmm. going to be there. Grace Carney. Grace Carney is going to be there. Morphine. Speaking of Brittany Rolfs, I think um, Adam's family opens tonight too. Yes. That's playing for the rest of the month. Yes. And I want to go to, do you have time to go see it? Probably. I probably can make it happen. I can see it on October 30th. That Sunday is, it's the last oh, day perfect. that it's playing. Yeah. That's when I'm going. Um, yeah, they're doing the Adam's family. Brittany Rolfs is going to be playing Morticia, which is mm -hmm. iconic. I hope she has that, like, that reflected light on her face at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can't wait to see. Yeah, I think that's all I've got. So that's got all the news else? that's fit. Uh, I do not. Great. Um, so we're going to play you a short um, trailer for the Washer Music Festival. This was a little Q&A that we did with a lot of the artists, um, so everyone can get to know them a little better. Check it out. This is Supernova. I'm Aida. This is Nectarine Girl. And I am Wash Ashore Festival 2022. A Wash Ashore is a person who comes to a place where they're not from, but they feel like they belong. Where and when have I washed ashore. I have currently washed ashore um, in Los Angeles. Wherever I find queer community, um, that's where I feel home. I feel like tour for me is a huge time when I feel washed ashore. Honestly, my whole goddamn life. What does queerness mean to me? Does anything that challenges traditional notions of cis heteronormativity is authenticity. I want to be loud and proud and unapologetic. Using love and acceptance to empower other people who are like you. It means being cooler than everyone else. How does my own queerness inform my music? So my music is innately queer. I am singing about my true lived experiences. From my influences, from I think the way I perform. It's made by me, uh, a queer trans woman. The purity and the authenticity. What excites and inspires me most about Provincetown? I feel like it's a safe space for queer people to come together and celebrate being queer. It's one of the most inclusive places ever. Beautiful queer culture. Everything is just so colorful all the time. That has existed for so long and has been through so much history. Ebb or flow and why? For me, I embrace all of the ebb. I embrace all of the flow. I would like to just flow more. Enjoying life um, for what it is. So I'm definitely about the flow. Obviously flow. And that's what I want to embody, honey. Friends, then next to you. Harrison. And you know, I'm Bob. Um, check out all those uh, artists Harrison. this upcoming weekend at the Washington Does he ever go by Harry? Festival. His, his mom calls him. Are we on? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Roddy wants to know if you ever go by Harry. Sometimes. Yeah. So his mom Harrison's calls a good him. name. I Thank love you. Harrison. Um, please welcome to the stage <laughs> Christine and Man on Man, two of our favorite artists. Hey, everybody. Hi. No, it's funny, like, basically as an adult, everyone called me Harrison, and then my mom came into work at the Red Inn, called me Harry, because she does. Bob picked up on her, and now everyone calls me Harry. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Bob. Because his mom also has that, like, really thick New England accent. She's like, Harry, do whatever Bob says. And I was like, I love this. <laughs> I love calling you that. That's your name from now on. <laughs> Harry. Right. So, um... Y'all done talking about bros? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two, I'm a Gemini. Thank you. Y'all really... Y'all said y'all hated Gemini. No, I'm a Gemini. Gemini. He loves Gemini. Only Andrew, it up. Andrew and Ethan said they hate Geminis. Get that. When is your birthday? I pee easy. Huh? When is your birthday? Uh, I'm not telling you. <laughs> but I'm on the cusp. Yeah. I got a bull in me, too. You do. That means Taurus. <laughs> so, Christine, you're headlining tonight at the Crown and Anchor. Yeah, me and my, can I cuss on this thing? Absolutely. Yeah. Me and my fucking band, that's Slay. what they're called. Yeah. And we're, we're performing tonight after the Net Gala. <laughs> you got your look together for the Net Gala? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell me where um, the basis for you, I mean, where, how did this start? 
Where did Christine come from? Life is rough sometimes. Mm -hmm. It makes a good cocktail mm -hmm. inside of you. Mm -hmm. And there was a bunch of shit that was happening around me. I was just talking over there to Shreveport and um, Katrina and all that shit down south made a real wild cocktail in me. Are you from New Orleans? Louisiana. Okay. Yeah. Is that how you know Mark Luke? Yeah, from no, I know Mark Luke from here, from Fag Bash. Uh -huh. And he was friends of a friend and he brought us here and he was the first person that brought me to P-Town. I know, I and remember Fag Bash that. was the first family and still accepting me family that I have here in P-Town. Good people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, uh, are you doing original music with your band tonight? Well, yeah. Excellent. I'm not doing like Bonnie Tyler's music. Or <laughs> that, those pop people y'all are talking about. <laughs> what's, what's your least favorite pop song of the last 20 years? Oh, fuck. I don't know. You don't know? Uh, the list goes on and on. I can't do list questions or favorite questions. I blank out. <laughs> like when people get angry around me, I just shut up. And then I never work with them again. <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys started as a band during the pandemic, man mm -hmm. on man. Um, just you were like, let's, you know, this is this show started as a pandemic project because we weren't sure when we were going to go back to work or like what the world was going to look like by the end of that first summer. So yeah. like, how did it start? When we were, it was the beginning of a pandemic and my mom passed away like six months before it started and Roddy's mom wasn't doing well. And it was like the hysteria of like, they might close state borders, you know, like, and it was his family's in California. We live in New York. And I was just like kind of fresh off losing mom. And I was like, okay, we just need to go where your mom is. Cause if they do close state borders and something happens to your mom, we should like be next you know, close to her. And then we had a quarantine for a few weeks before we saw her. So we drove out to California and it was in the middle of Texas that Roddy was like, we were going to get gear sent there anyway. He does music, I do music. And we were like, we're going to have a house full of instruments. We might as well just start making music. And then that's kind of the beginning of it. Just to pass the time, we were like, let's just make music. And then we're a couple and we're both musicians, but we'd never done that before. So it's kind of a stretch. <laughs> it's a different kind of relationship to jump into, like making music with a partner. I don't know if you've ever worked with a partner. It was, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it's hot. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's hot, but it, it's tricky. It's like a college and being in a relationship, like yeah. going to college. Do you have to like kind of shut off your like personal relationship and you're like, this is now a business thing. We are cool. We're learning colleagues. how to do that. Yeah, it's different communication skills. It was good for our relationship, I think. So you yeah. have to like talk about things you wouldn't generally. And there's a lot of pride involved, especially in making art. There's a push and a pull and a real sort of pride aspect about like, I created this. I'm really like defensive about it and it gets kind of weird joey said y'all don't fight a lot we which really is don't. fucking cool like you get yeah. to like ride around and sing your love and you don't fight that much not that unless it's like really intense decision making time like right now we're mix, yes, we're yes. mixing our second yeah. record right now it's getting a little bit like it's very seldom like personality it's just more like we have to handle all these fucking business things that we're like i don't know like what do you think and then it's like that's kind of the we have a pretty easy life in that way, but yeah. Oh, happy birthday, by the way. It's Thank Joey's you. birthday. Hey, Libra. Yay, Libra. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Um, what is your writing process like? Is one person more responsible for lyrics, or it's kind of split in half? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we just sort of jump in and just do do what we do, kind of like yeah. I think our, we when we start when we released our first single, Daddy, like we we were doing it for fun, for real. Like we're gonna send to twenty friends. Like here's what we're doing. What are you guys up to? And then people were paying attention to it. And then immediately we knew that like there were a lot of queer people who were like, this is rad. And that really informed like how we would move forward with our music. Like we wanted to make it about queerness. I mean, you guys are talking about um, bros, which is Christine's Again? favorite. <laughs> just kidding. No, but I think oh, there's, like there's a, a bag of cocaine. There's, you just can't put it down. <laughs> there's an element of like, you know, complacency where it's like, you know, people don't want to talk about queerness because it's like we're good, but our cup isn't overflowing, you know, and like we were having all these people like reach out to us on social media like this is important to me. I don't see people who look like me who are making this kind of music. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, OK, well, we need to be like loud and proud and not just like, oh, we're just passing the time. So we made it a point to be like right, very queer centric lyric. That's kind of in our process is like 
let's just really show what we like and not water anything down. Yeah. 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 When does the second album come out? Uh, probably not till like uh, May or yeah, April or something yeah. of 2023. We just finished it though. We recorded the whole record in Provincetown at our place. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that one of the reasons why you chose the name Man on Man? It's kind of just to be very forward yeah. in your queerness. Pretty much, yeah. I would say yes, yeah. It's the most like almond nose name. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. So you, you guys are like semi based in Provincetown? Yeah. yeah, we have a place here and we were here for most of the summer making the record and hanging out. And then I hurt my ankle when I was up here and just sort of was out of commission for like two months. Ugh. So I just like stayed inside for two months. It was a fucked up summer. It was a it fucked was. up summer. <laughs> Isn't it like you guys were saying, there was a lot of death, a lot of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of where we're at too. I mean, even coming out of the pandemic, the pandemic, like our project was so pandemic based. Like you were guys saying, we're saying too, like it's such a springboard for like creativity. But at the same time, it's really a dark time. Yeah. A lot of people ha haven't like fully, I think, come out of it yet. Like most people. Yeah, most people. I have an album coming up next month, and I wrote it in the pandemic. Love that. Fuck yeah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it. I listened to it the amazing. other day. It's amazing. It's, it's so, so sweet. Good. It's called it's Midnight amazing. Fuck Train. Midnight Fuck Train. And it's a hell of a train. And you're gonna be doing material from that tonight. Yeah. Excellent. It's full on like live band, as opposed to like Christine isn't like. You haven't recorded with live band before, right? That's your first live band. I've never recorded before. in a studio before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always in like a bedroom with a pantyhose over the microphone. Mm -hmm. Nice, excellent. Yeah. So we're lucky enough to see you perform usually like a couple times a year. What keeps you coming back to Pete Town? It's a beautiful place. Yeah. And I like I like this time of year because it's like last night I walked around on the street that wasn't so crowded. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like, hello, Pete Town. And it's been um I like that um, when the season changes, it really gets to be quite beautiful. And it's a place where like writers would, you know, come and you can understand why you fucking hold up here in the winter times and write because it's just a very eerie, beautiful kind of Edward Gorey style of dark living. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And it's been a kind place to me and I'll give back kindness to some places that are kind to me. How long do we have you for? Just the weekend? Till Sunday. You haven't ever done a whole summer, right? No, no. Who would come to my show for a whole summer? That would take <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'd have to like give away free food and stuff. <laughs> you did a show at the Red Room though this past summer. Yeah. I call it the Red Room Alexis Carrington's Pussy. <laughs> That's what it looks like. It's insane. <laughs> it's like stairs covered in red glitter and curtains. Okay. And it's a very, I like the Red Room because it's a, like y'all played at the Red Room. It's got that big, big deep cavern in yeah, the back it's a too, very, that big hole I, that you come out of. Yeah, like as a creative person, an entertainer, like it's really fun to be put in a place you don't belong, like here. And, um, <laughs> and see what happens to your music and how you move on stage. And the Red Room is very weird because it's got the staircase, it's got curtains. It's like you immediately want to do some terrible shit uh -huh. and they're like don't touch the piano so of course i'm gonna touch the piano <laughs> and um yeah i like that p town is like wherever they stick you it's gonna be interesting mm -hmm. um so yeah i love that they say don't touch the piano meanwhile every club night they have there's like sixty thousand plastic cups on the piano <laughs> that's right. why and you know it's like religion when they tell you no you're gonna do it right? 100%. <laughs> they told us that too and i was like do you know who my boyfriend is? <laughs> like, bitch, he, like, he owns the he piano. Owns the Open that piano. piano. Open that up. Let me tune that with my eyes. Why would you even say that about an instrument ever? Like, don't touch don't the touch piano. It. It's Why a would you piano. Say that about anything, don't touch don't, that. Yeah. Want to do it? Or Somebody is. Yeah. But I mean, something that's right. made to touch. <laughs> right. Well, that's like fruit with your fingers. My friend feels that way about when they go to art galleries, and there's like people, these artists, they'll put like art on the floor. And, there's oh, right. and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, if it's on the fucking floor <laughs> yeah. and it's got this shit that you can do, and she's like, why wouldn't you touch right, the right, art? Right, right. And you yeah. with that. But then you get arrested and you owe <laughs> lots, lots, of, lots of money, okay. depending on where you go look at art. I was at a show once, it was John Waters' show, and he had made art, and he had an art show. And it was one of these things, like, you look down on it, and it's like a, a chain that sort of forms the profile of a person. Huh. And you can move it around and change, like, the nose size and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, that yeah. kind of game. And it was on a table, and John Waters was there, and I went in there, and I was like, oh, wow, look. I was with my friend, and we picked it up. I was like, oh, look. And then he came over, and he goes, uh, that's art. Don't 
That was not <laughs> yeah, it, it's not a toy. It felt so it's good like, to be scolded by John Walker. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, look at you, you uptight motherfucker. Yeah. Who's uptight now, John Waters? <laughs> yeah, it's like if you put an etch a sketch on the table, I'm going to do it. Yeah, right. it's a toy. I don't even know what a piano is. A piano. <laughs> right, like you have to touch it for it to work. Yeah. 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 Sure do. It's all about the touching, actually. <laughs> Doesn't work without now touching. Now we're getting it. into something. Huh? <laughs> touch. Touch. It's true. We were not allowed to touch for a long time. <laughs> it's true. Are y'all gonna be at the Net Gala as well tonight? No. Today's gonna Joey's be... birthday. We're gonna okay. have a birthday celebration at the no, house. We're gonna Everyone's be welcome. Come at three o'clock. No. We're making some cake, and then we're gonna go. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. We have like seventeen people, and we're making one cake. One little cake. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll be coffee. we'll be at the gala. We don't have looks though. We'll kill the people, you guys. Have fun tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. You guys have a fun show. This is fun. You do this every morning? Every Friday. Every Friday. Oh, every Friday. We only That's do cool. it once a week. Thank God. We're bartenders who <laughs> so are not really morning people. <laughs> right, right. As I imagine musicians and performers, kind of same deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you collect a lot of gossip at the bar and you're like listening oh, to yeah. things? I refer to it a lot of times as a gossip show and people are like, no, it's not supposed to be that. And I'm like, like yes, we get to decide. yes. Yeah, we can decide whatever we want it to be. So fun. Maybe we got some tea for y'all. Yeah. I got those queens on the other side too. Like you see those morning people, I got some tea on them oh, too. That's it's nice to see true. people on TV and know their tea. As now, well. now, Christine, now, now. Every place has a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for making some time to be here. Thank, Thank you, guys. guys. And can't wait to see you all this weekend. Yeah, I'm Thanks. excited. Thank you. Thank um, you. Check out another teaser trailer for the Washer Music Festival. We'll be back with a couple more guests in just a minute. Uh, please welcome Kalechi and Holly Miranda to the stage. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Tomorrow's headliners. Holly, you said you're going to be here at the PBC. Mm -hmm. And Kalechi, you're tomorrow at the Crown. At the Crown and yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Wash Ashore Virgins, both of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're a pe you, this is your first time in province, Yes. Right? You've never been here at I've all? I've never been here. Where are you from? Um, well, I'm from Orangeburg, South Carolina. A uh, lovely small town, South Carolina. Uh, but I live in LA, mm -hmm. um, and it's just been a wonderful experience so far. When did you get here? Yesterday. Did you make it? We had dinner together yeah. last time, but did you make it out after? Uh, yeah, I went to the A house <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, for a little spattering of people there, Cute. but went, went home because I need to be responsible. Right. But um, it was the ferry ride in that I feel like was my initiation into Columbus Was it town. one of these? It was one of Ooh. it was one of those. <laughs> those aren't fun. Where yeah. it's like it's like a hospital room. People are like, oh, oh I was like everybody holding on him. to the like outside. <laughs> it was it was quite the experience. It's been like that these past <laughs> yes. few weeks. Yes. Yeah. Broken in then. Yes. Yes. Um but you're a P town regular, right? Mm -hmm. You've been coming for a while. Yeah. Did you went here all summer? I don't I don't right now, but I was here for a good chunk of like the pandemic mm -hmm. lockdown time yeah. through, through a winter here, which is a whole other thing. That is a whole other thing. <laughs> Very different. Did you write a whole album in the winter? Uh I did not. Yeah. No, but I did make a lot of weird art videos in a tiny Great. room. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel like a lot of people through the pandemic were like, oh, I was so creative and I made so much stuff. And it's also like entirely fine if you didn't do any of that. 100%. However you wanted to handle the pandemic is how you handled it. Yeah. 
Um, so tell us a little about The Righteous Babes. Uh, the Righteous Babes Review is a, a combination of a few different acts. Um, Gracie and Rachel, Jocelyn McKenzie and myself are opening up for Ani DeFranco. And we're all um, supporting each other on our songs. So it'll be like an in the round. Like I'll do a song, Gracie and Rachel will do a song, Jocelyn will do a song. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'll play bass with Gracie and Rachel or guitar with Jocelyn. And yeah, it's sort of a, a little conglomerate of uh, musicians that are going out with Ani. I love that. I always, I always have more fun creating in a collaborative sense rather than just like kind of being standalone. Yeah. It's easier and more fun in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean, you know a little about elaboration. You were actually um, one of of the playlist. One of the songs that I've been obsessed with is um, your song with Z Machine, which is fantastic. Thank How did you. that come about? Um, so Z and I met a couple of years ago when Z met um, moved to LA, um, and we kind of met through Instagram and then met up at one of those like LA writers, like singer writer things. Um, and I just remember only speaking to Z at that event because I'm kind of like, I'm a very much so an introvert. And after that, we went a year without working together. And then I heard a snippet of um, everybody want well, what became everybody wants it on TikTok. And I remember texting Z and being like, "Bitch, <laughs> who is on this second verse? Like, what are you doing with this?" <laughs> Um, and that's legit how you're like, can it be me? No, literally, <laughs> it was that. I was like, so no one's written on this. Can I do it? Um, and Z was like, yeah, sure. And yeah. that's exactly how it happened. Yeah, I love that. Do you know who Kalechi is friends with? Who? Patrick. Which Patrick? You know Patrick? Milk like, Daddy? Yeah. I love yeah. Patrick. Murphy. Me too. He's the best. That's, yeah, yeah he saw the promo for you being on the show and he got all excited. Yeah. 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 Where in LA do you live? West Hollywood with my mm -hmm. people. Right. Yes. <laughs> I used to live at Mansfield and Highland. Okay, I'm at. I'm like I'm not telling you where. I'm <laughs> actually, people outside but your I'm door. in West Hollywood with my people. <laughs> I'm like actually. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, I grew up between Detroit and Nashville, but um, I lived in Laurel Canyon for a little bit. Lovely. But I've mostly I've been in New York since like the late '90s. So you're like a New Yorker through and through at this point. I mean, I moved there when I was 16. It was like a get out of Detroit or, or go to like a pray the gay away camp. So I I'm know, glad that's the choice you made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I went with. Um, Are you still close with your family? Mm, not, not too much. No. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, as y'all perform, do you find, because this weekend is a queer music festival and I feel like a lot of the audience will be queer. Do y'all find that when you perform typically your audiences are queer or are they more mixed audiences? Um, yeah, I, f I, I just played some shows in Spain and Portugal, and I feel like every lesbian in Menorca came to that <laughs> show, and Hot. also Porto, and I love it. It yeah. feels like, you they know, show up. yeah, I love like, that. okay. I'd That's say, it. like, my queer friends and audience show up for me, but my music is for everyone, and I mm -hmm. think queer people, we're now in a, in a time where we're stepping into a space where being queer is not taboo, and it's there's nothing wrong with queerness being mainstream. Mm -hmm. And I think as much as you, um, you know, some, I think a lot, of, a lot of times we think about queerness and like gatekeeping queerness, but as much as queerness becomes mainstream, that's acceptance is important, not mm -hmm. just tolerance, but acceptance. And right. when you make something seem normal, um, that's really important. And so I appreciate, you know, my audience being coming from all walks of life. I really appreciate my queer audience because I think my queer audience is who kind of has propelled me and pushed me. Um, but I, I love that everyone enjoys, you know, my music and myself. And I mean, as much as it's becoming more sort of seen and accepted, like what Kristen was saying earlier about it's dangerous still in the center a lot, a lot of parts of this country to yeah. go even go to a gay movie. Like, do you tour all through the middle? I kind of I play a lot more in Europe. Yeah. These days, to be honest. Um, yeah, I feel like I started, I think it was actually during like the Obama administration when I when I was taking my band, which were, you know, a ragtag of all sorts of people into middle America, I started feeling unsafe sometimes and, yeah. and responsible for the people that I was taking. And, and then I've kind of slowly shifted into like the coast more and, and a lot of Europe, but I, I also think that the appreciation for the arts is just very different in Europe and the way that you're treated and 
compensated is, uh, you know, makes it more um, possible because touring is also really difficult with the prices of airfare and checking baggage and gasoline, you know, like everything that goes into it now is, uh, it's, you know, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like to your point of like queerness being more accepted, I almost feel like both ends are moving forward. Like queerness is being more accepted in the mainstream, but like like those places you said that you've traveled, it's mm -hmm. getting worse as it moves forward mm -hmm. with people being more brazen and how they treat mm -hmm. queer people. And it's scary yeah. out there. And we do get spoiled here. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't often go to those places, but you know, I'm certain that I would feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, that's I, like when I think of evolution, I think of sort of like flattening out a slinky. So it's like as you're going forward, you're always kind of, it's like two steps forward, one step back. You know, there's always yeah, that true. push. So it does feel like things are moving, even if it does scare some people into like pushing back a bit, you know? And that's, on, honestly, yeah. something that's really important is things like Washington Music Festival, having queer people come together, celebrate, share their art, be together. That's important in fighting back against all of that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I also, I have to give a shout out to Anna Tulla. Um, next weekend, I'll be back playing the Fox Fest, which oh, Anne and Christine have put together. There's a variety show on Friday night at the Crown and Anchor, and then I'm playing a solo set Saturday. Saturday, 8.30, Friday, 7.30. So she'll kill me if I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's had a busy week. She's at our province, Arts <laughs> yeah. Province down this weekend, she's, straight into Anne the Fox Is Anne the mayor? Fest. I feel like Anne's the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> There's like 15 mayors of Provincetown. <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much for coming in this morning yeah. um, and break a leg you. on your shows. We Can't look forward to seeing you. it. If you're in town, make sure to make it to both their shows. It's going to be incredible. This whole weekend's going to be killer. Get here. Yeah. yeah. Come on down to Wash Shore. Yeah. It's getting bigger every year. I mean, this is only the second one. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much for being here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks no, for having thank, me. Thank, uh, this is my, thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And thanks, everyone at home, for watching. Thanks for waking up in Provincetown. Wherever you are. Thank you to our sponsors. The Be Well Cannabis Dispensary, the Promise Sun Brewing Company, the Crown and Anchor, mm -hmm. Cafe Heaven, the Red Inn, the Adam Howard Metal Workshop at 3 Bradford Street, and Project Valor Sailing.org. Yeah. Have a good weekend. We'll see you <laughs> like, then, good. <laughs> good, good morning, morning everybody. everybody.